Hey. Hello, 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 young titans. Here we are now live on the Facebook. <laughs> and we are bringing you information which is going to be worth its weight in gold. And I'm telling you, today's speaker is just going to blow it out of the water. So before we get in there, let me just tell you what Young Titans platform is. Young Titan platform is where young professionals and entrepreneurs join after their college graduation or when they are in the workforce to propel their career, get inspired and become a part of a thriving community. Listen to me. If you're not a part of this community and you know people who should be a part of this community, become a part of this community. Otherwise, you are missing out. Now, what I would like you to do is to share this live recording with your friends, family, and others. Like our Facebook page. Subscribe to our channel. Please send us live questions on Facebook comments. You can always email us at info at unextleadership.com. So Young Titans platform fills in the gap from what you know and what you need to know for you to succeed. In short, YTP fills the gap between you and the leadership as young professionals embarking in the workforce. You see, there are schools, colleges, departments to start a career. On the other hand, they get the leadership training, many technical trainings in their corporation and workforce. But what is out there for the new graduates to excel? Excel in your job, excel as an entrepreneur. Very few things. Practically none, I would say. So this is where we are filling that gap. We have been bringing to you really great experts, people who have actually done it, done it through failures, done it through successes. And they are bringing in their hard work, their stories, how they did it, so you can shorten your curve instead of you now trying to go and figure out how to do everything. It took me years to get to this level, I'm telling you. And so did for all of us. We went through all those things and we are bringing you those things here. Those small things sometimes, which can just shift your career, shift your life. So this is the best career entrepreneurship advice that you can get because there is nothing to fill this gap right now. Uh, please definitely send us the questions as we are saying, because that is what helps us in answering what you are looking for and gives us more ammo to help you as we move further in these sessions. Every Saturday, we are bringing you these sessions and every Saturday we have either a panel or a distinguished guest who is actually bringing these things with their knowledge and as I said, with their experience. And we have a beautiful panel here. And so each week, we, as I said, we have people coming in, but with different backgrounds. That is how we are going to be adding value to you. Let's do a quick introduction for our panel. So who am I? Why should you be even listening to me? <laughs> you must be wondering. My name is Raj Kapoor. Uh, before going full-time into my business, I was working as a chief financial officer for 30 years. I had a passion for not-for-profit organizations, worked over there. I even have a group right now, uh, which I just started called Non-Profit Edge. And I have a lot of people where we are going through uh, a solid learning and teaching. I'm the founder and CEO of Options Ahead. I'm an author. I am also on a radio show uh, that I run on Mondays. I'm, uh, I'm an entrepreneur, uh, wealth mindset coach, lots of things that I'm working on and doing. My main thing is the passion that I have is what I work into. And all across my life, I've had my career and businesses on the side with it. So that's what I'm always bringing to you. Let me introduce you to some other folks who are here. And uh, let me start with my dear friend, Sheikh, Sheikh Rahman, the orchestrator of the YTP platform. My good friend, Sheikh is an engineer by background, is the founder of Unext Leadership 
uh, for training, emphasize, emphasizing the values one needs to have. He liked to work with people and was slowly drawn to people who value people. That is where his leadership journey started. He wanted to learn how did they do that? His inspiration are few people that include some people in his community and that is his family, starting from his grandmother, his daughter, his sister, his wife, from whom he learned a lot of leadership basics. He loves to hang out with like-minded people and he likes to share or teach what he knows. One reason behind that is he knows that teachers learn the most. He will be our host along with few other co-hosts and panelists. Next is my friend, Jan Roberts. Jan is joining us from Scotland today. If you recall, Jan spoke about international leadership here on the YTP platform. Leaders are servers. Jan is a living proof of that. He helps corporate decision makers discover their major challenges and create sustainable solutions. Having worked in global organization with diverse team for 30 years gives him a lot of insight and knowledge about major organizational challenges and many of its causes. My friend, Arti, Arti, you're looking beautiful today. <laughs> She's joining us from South Africa. See where we have the people from all over the world here. She's a dynamic lady and a dynamic speaker. She was featured here on the YTP platform. 20 years plus experience, successful entrepreneur, two international companies celebrating Humanity International as an international diversity and inclusion specialist and key leadership institute, specializing in exclusive values based on leadership training programs with a focus on creating huge impact in many countries. Recently, she was awarded as a nation builder. My friend Ron, Ron Cooper, Ron and his wife Marty, really great friends. Ron and Marty are retired US Air Force and CIA officers. They are in their 52nd year of marriage and are relationship coaches. Ron helps organization develop their high performing teams through human behavior insights, personal coaching and leadership training. They both serve through their Cooper Cooper Culture Organization. And Ron has just created a wonderful relationship program, which I'm just going to go through, I know. And that is something which you should be looking out for because it's really, really amazing. Another great addition and great friend, Kamro. He was not able to join us today, but he is a part of our network and he has been helping a lot with his team uh, and IT. He is our partner. And we are missing him today, but he will be with us in the coming weeks. And then Dr. Halida. Dr. Halida is Faculty of International Health Department at John Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. Uh, she has demonstrated her leadership role by founding a reproductive health research institute. She helped develop reproductive health research cap capacity through conducting scientific research in Bangladesh. She has over 40 journal publications served on many committees of WHO, Geneva, International Medical Advisory, Panel of IPPF, London. I can keep on going, okay, with Dr. Halida and this is not going to end. So I just want to say a warm welcome to Dr. Halida. And these are all our panelists. Now what? Now, my great friend, mentor, I can't even explain, Joanne. Joanne, you're looking great. She is a mentor, a friend, a guide who has always inspired me to move forward in my life. She has impacted millions of people around the world. And today she is here to change your mindset. And I'm telling you, change your life. The lady with the heart of gold. And I'm going to let my friend shake do the full justice for Joanne. And then we will start with you, Joanne. Thank you so much. Shake. Thank you, Raj. Uh, thanks for your fabulous introduction. Hello, everyone. 
who are watching us uh, live or in recording, please share this with your friends and in Facebook, Instagram, and subscribe YouTube. YouTube. Uh, there's plenty of ways to share these days. And uh, before that, uh, sorry for uh, starting a little late today as we had some IT people, which is me at this moment, was having some difficulties. So uh, apologies for that. But today I have the distinct honor to have a very special guest to share some knowledge with you. If you're an entrepreneur, a business owner, or want to implement some of the ideas somewhere, um, uh, the, the best person to help you, you guide you, or all the behind uh, work you would, or help you the behind the scene work, mindset, financial planning set, that would be her. She's an entrepreneur, entrepreneur who can help and sustain you in your own business. She chartered a few things for me as well in my entrepreneur journey. She's a giver. Some of my other friends uh, and participants in this call, such as um, in this call, such as Ian Robert, Robert, um, Artimo, Ron Cooper, and of course Raj, uh, they all know our guest speaker very well. Uh, she started completely on her own by herself in her early 20s with a borrowed 10,000 pounds. In 10 years, she had over 20 people working for her. She hired two CEOs to run her businesses, which I, if some of this uh, could be a little older information, Joanne, uh, from our talk from a long time ago, but which we will hear from her uh, in a little bit, hopefully uh, the latest and greatest stories. Uh, she's a founder of the Entrepreneurs Academy, in short, it's called EA. Uh, that is running for last 21 years successfully that provides practical management training in all aspects of business in Ireland. The EA has tra tra uh, trained over 40,000 entrepreneurs towards excuse me, success thus far, uh, probably more, as the uh, leading government supplier in last three years alone. The EA trained over 400 long-term job seekers to start their own business in addition to training over 8,000 people on their uh, startup journey. Uh, talk about a job creation, right? <laughs> she is the founder of QED, the accreditation expert. QED is trusted accreditation advisor to leading business schools worldwide. QED is doing businesses over 10 countries since uh, 1998. She's an executive director of the John Maxwell team, uh, which is a producer of 30,000 and counting uh, coaches all around the world in 120 countries. By the way, uh, yours truly uh, is one of them. Uh, so are a few of our uh, other hosts in this platform now. She is in the board of British Irish Chamber of Commerce for the city of uh, Dublin, Ireland. And in May, 2018, she launched leading Ireland's future together, lift in, in short, to help Ireland become the best country in the world at developing leaders of characters across the, across the age. Joanne has recruited a 24 fund founding partners so, uh, to fund and support Lift Ireland. Lift is a nonprofit movement that aims to build a culture, character based leadership in Ireland. I'm not going to uh, mention to you about a few things we have done as an employee or affiliate, such as a concerned worldwide network of uh, entrepreneur, uh, un, un, uh, enterprising women, in short, new NEW. She has touched lives around the globe, as Raj was saying. It's not um, hurts of people or lots of people, it's loads of people in Irish, uh, as she says. Uh, another fact I discovered that she gets uh, eight hours sleep or more. Uh, every night, <laughs> and I do know that all her employees love her dearly, and uh, which I experience closely. She is a wonderful person, and I hear she's a fabulous host also. Uh, Yan and uh, Arti, we can talk about that <laughs> when anyone visits her. She and her husband have three daughters. When I asked, I found out that if you're not having three daughters, uh, you won't be able to uh, to uh, work with her closely. I'm, I'm just kidding. But I met one of our um, team members of this who also has three daughters. And I checked with my uh, wife, that's not going to happen for us. Uh, aside <laughs> of joke, not enough. Uh, if this is not enough to, for you to understand the leadership of Joanne. She is a writer of the book, Don't Get a Job, Build a Business. 
I read that book a couple of years ago, cover to cover, and found a lot of uh, the technical help in my mindset and in my action. This book is a great guide for anyone who is a new entrepreneur or want to set that mindset at jobs or as an employee, it doesn't matter. You can use it as a complete guide also if you're maintaining the direction uh, word to word. She speaks in front of CEOs, entrepreneurs as needed for building business, uh, building cities or uh, building economics. She's a great uh, orator. She was interviewed by different uh, people, different places and different countries. She was also interviewed by multiple TV and radio shows. She's a government advisor on entrepreneurism or entrepreneurship, whichever the right word is, and a recognized media commentator. And what makes me inspired and go finish my task is that despite her astronomical success, she's, an, she's an, a super active person in sport. Yes, she bikes or cycles. She does uh, some crazy 600 uh, kilometers of biking in France, Spain. Uh, just recently, I, I was following her doing some massive gym activity challenge. But let me not take much more time. Let me present uh, Joanne with the question I have in my mind. Uh, the first question to start the discussion is, Joanne, with all these things, tell me, tell us your story. Tell us a bit about your background. What got you to the leadership position that you are in today, um, a lift Ireland or any of the things that you're leading? Well, firstly, Joanne. thank you so much, Sheikh, and thank you, Raj, and thank you for those gorgeous introductions. I think I must be very old. I've done so much, according to you, and all that research you've done on me. You know more about me than I do. Uh, but a massive, huge greetings from Ireland. It's, uh, it's wonderful to be on this platform with you all and delighted to be talking to all of our young titans. Um, and as Raj said, absolutely spread this to everybody. This is not stuff you're going to necessarily get in college. This is, this is us talking to you to tell you what's important uh, and to know about and to share our experience a little bit with you so that you, you can not make some of the mistakes that perhaps that I did uh, along the way. But um, so, Sheikh, I suppose a little bit about myself. You've told a lot about me there, but um, I think probably, um, you know, I, I, you know I, I, I've lived in Ireland my whole life. My parents are from Ireland. My grandparents are from Ireland. And I've always been here, although I have lived in other countries. Um, and I, I think I always thought I was going to be in business. You know, in school, I was always organizing things. Even when I was younger, I was always organizing things. Um, you know, I, I remember my parents coming home one time. I was probably about 14 and all the neighbors were sitting in our living room, in our main room. Uh, and I had charged them in to come in as I did a bit of a show with some of my friends and all the neighbors were sitting there. So um, I was always organizing things. I was I was always at that. But I left uh, school the same as everybody else here in Ireland around 18 and I studied business and I really enjoyed business. Now, when I was leaving college, there weren't any, there really weren't any jobs. It was the early 1990s um, and there were no jobs at all. So I went and did a couple of interviews just to get interview practice and thought, well, you know, this is what I need to do. So I went to some of the big firms and applied to them to see if I could get some interview practice and very luckily got offered a job with Ernst & Young. Uh, EY now as they're known um, and started down an accountancy route. I was being paid the big handsomely fee at the time of £6,000 a year, which is about $6,000 a year, which is <laughs> not a huge amount, but it, um, it started me down an accountancy route. Um, interestingly, I, I didn't stay there. I'd already done four years college and I, and I, when I started to do accountancy, I realized although I liked numbers and although I liked business that just wasn't for me at all so I did a u-turn out of there and I went back and worked for the university but um, I had a number of jobs along the way um, in my mid-20s then I decided to travel and go and do other things I I think I got a little bit disillusioned chic with business um, I 
you know, the economy here started to heat up a bit um, and everybody was talking about how much you got, how much you're earning. That was kind of the, the saying when we were coming out of college, how, how much are you getting in your job? It was that all the time. It was all about money. And I really felt it wasn't all about money. And um, so I got a little bit disillusioned about golly, is business all about money? Um, and I thought maybe maybe I'd be better suited in the charity sector. Um, and that really was what started to come into my head. So I applied to the Irish overseas aid agencies um, and I got uh, as a volunteer. So I decided I'd go as a volunteer. That was the way I wanted to go. And um, and I got sent to the Rwandan border, the border of Rwanda and Tanzania after the Rwandan civil war. Um, and I worked in the refugee camps there uh, from 95 till the beginning of 97. And, um, you know, it gave me, uh, it gave me a huge amount of learning, huge amount of experience to come from very safe uh, and very comfortable Ireland um, and to, to head over there to refugee camps, uh, you know, where it, it just was, was, was completely different. Very, very good for me. I learned an awful lot more than I think I could ever have given or helped out with. But I think the thing I learned most over there was the value of education because I'd had free education here in Ireland. I'd had free schooling. My college was free. Uh, my master's was free. Like I'd had really, um, we we're very, very fortunate here. It's not quite the same at the moment, but I was at the time. And when I was in the refugee camps where um, teenagers couldn't get schooling, um, I could see how important education was. Um, and, and the other thing about it was, was that I knew that education was about the only thing that someone couldn't steal off you. Everything else, somebody could steal off you. But if you had it in here, nobody could take it from you. So um, when I left um, the when I left Africa and came back to Ireland, um, I, I knew the charity world was not for me. Um, I missed some of the business side of things. I love business. I do love business. But, um, but I knew that the charity sector was not for me, but I also knew that I always needed to be in education, that education for me was, was just everything, absolutely everything. So I came back to Ireland, I was 27, and I set up my, shortly after that, I set up my first business, which is now the Entrepreneurs Academy. So it's well over 20 years old now, and there's an amazing team that run that business. They're just, they're just fantastic. Um, and then shortly after that, I set up QED. But um, so I've had a lot of years in between. Um, I, I'm very happy to be in education that, that's, and learning. That's what I'm about. Um, but I did really, in my 30s, I really did question very hard why I was doing what I was doing. And um, I, I think I probably hit a bit of a stumbling block. I was working very, very hard, but felt I wasn't really getting uh, getting anywhere. I, ha I had a large number of employees and it seems to be that every month it was paying a wage bill, you know, it was paying a salary bill. Um, and, and it was just working very, very hard. So um, I think that's when I really did a lot of soul searching to see, am I in the right thing? Am I doing the right thing? Um, and I discovered I was in the right business, but actually um, I was a big part of the problem. I, I was managing pretty well, but I wasn't leading at all. And that's where my journey into leadership really started and where I started to study uh, and read books about leadership and, and understand where I was going wrong um, a lot of the way. And, and I suppose in, in short shape, that kind of led me to my Lift Ireland uh, journey. I, I set up Lift Ireland then in 2018. Um, and it's kind of interesting because I've come full circle, you know, from so sort of being in the charity world in my 20s and then uh, and then going into, you know, really setting up my own business, complete private industry stuff. Um, and then, uh, you know, in my in my 40s, then to say, actually, do you know what I need to I need to go back into that not for profit sector um, and Lift Ireland is a not for profit initiative. So that's where we are now which is great. Wow, wonderful, wonderful. What a story. Thank you. Hey, hey Joanne, uh, that was just amazing. Let me ask you, what have been your greatest moments of learning in your life? 
Do you know what, uh, Raj? That's that's a great question. You know, I think that. I mean, I have a lot of them all the time. Uh, you know, I I I I do a lot of reflection and thinking, and so I'm I'm trying to learn and get better all the time. But I think some of the big ones for me were um, certainly that at age 25, heading off to the Rwandan border, there were enormous learnings for me there. Um, I think one of the greatest learnings that I got out of that was how unbelievably fortunate I had been. And I had no idea. You know, I had no, I had no real, real, real realization or I didn't understand the context of that. Um, and it really gave me a huge sense of how fortunate I had been and how fortunate I am to live in, in Ireland. Um, it also made me really think that in a way it's just luck or chance. I, I could have been one of the Rwandans walking across the border uh, seeking refuge at the time. Just it's just it's sort of it's sort of just luck where you get or a chance, you know, like who knows where where you're going to end up. So um, it really that really was a huge learning for me. Um, and, and in fact, throughout that whole that whole time that I was there, um, I think I was very fortunate. I'm very, uh, my mom is very calm individual. She's, she's fantastic. She's a wonderful, wonderful woman. And um, she's extremely calm. And literally from the, the time I arrived over there and things like my papers were wrong. So when I was being flown to where the refugee camps were, the, the, the flight landed to check our papers and then took off again to go again. And my papers were wrong. And so they kept me there. I mean, I, I had no money, no, no language, no, no nothing, you know, so, so I, I was very, I, I, I suddenly realized and learned that, wow, I've got this calm gene that my mom has given me, which is sort of like, well, sure, what can you do, <laughs> you know, uh, just what can you do? And I just fa found a way to, I actually, I actually ended up go, flying from the center of Tanzania to, um, to the Rwandan border on a UN postal flight. They weighed me. Uh, they weighed me that morning to see would I be light enough to take with the postal flight. And that was how I managed to get across because there were no more flights that were going uh, across. So however I talked my way into it, but I, I, I was very calm. So I learned a huge, huge amount in that whole time. I, I really did. But then, you know, I think of other times that I learned a huge amount by leaving accountancy and leaving Ernst & Young. Um, when I was in there, I mean, it's, it's a great company, but it wasn't for me. And yet it was going to be a permanent pensionable job. My dad was an accountant. Um, you know, it, it, it was it, it seemed ludicrous to be leaving. Um, and yet I knew I knew I have this thing with me that every year I sort of look back and I go, did I do as much as I could have done this year? Um, and that has always I've been like that since I was very young and um, and I think on the accountancy thing I just went look I'm, I'm this is never going to be me there are other things I need to do so um, uh, that that was a big learning for me that it was okay to make that move that you know when I was on that sort of journey it was okay it wasn't the right one for me and it was okay to do a, a u-turn and it'll all be okay and don't, you know, not to worry too much about that. Um, and actually a big, a big reason I did that leave from accountancy was because I was 22 and a friend of mine uh, got sudden adult death syndrome. You know, I saw him that morning, he went off to the gym and he never came back again. Um, he's one of my neighbors. And um, I just, I, I think when he passed away that, that was massive learning for me. It was hard learning, but it was huge learning in that I only get one go at this and I could be gone. So I was doing accountancy at the time and I knew it wasn't right for me. Um, and so that that was really what made up my mind that, you know, to sort of make that jump. Um, and those jumps are hard. They're really hard, but they 
they feel great eventually. <laughs> they feel hard for a while, but they feel great eventually. So there was huge learning uh, for me in that. But Raj, I'm 50 now. I've got loads of learnings. I could go on all night with all my learnings. <laughs> loads and loads of them. Loads Thank and loads. you, Joanne. Thank you. That was just amazing. And uh, and guys who, are, who you are out there listening, did you hear what Joanne just said? Did you hear that? It is so profound. You only get one go at it. Do you understand how profound that is? So don't waste your time on things that are unnecessary. What we are bringing you here is really, really wonderful. Like I, I also say in many times when I'm talking to any of uh, the people who I know, life is not a dress rehearsal. You just get one going. Just loved it, Joanne. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Raj. But you know what, Raj, even at that, um, when I when I talk to a lot of my friends and peers that are entrepreneurs, um, you know, we, we do only, and I'm always, I, I sort of harp on about this, that it's, um, we just get one go at this. You know, what are you doing that for? You just get one go at this. But something that we all reflect on quite frequently is that, um, and I think this is really important if I was 19 or 20 and thinking about this again, there is no, there is no right journey. You know, there is no sort of, you know, I, I, I'm going to do it the right way. You do it your way. You do it the way that works for you. And, and even though we only get one go at it and don't waste time at it, don't worry about making, you know, about making U-turns and don't worry about, I don't know if you call them roundabouts. Do you call them roundabouts? We call them roundabouts on a, on a, on a road, but you know, like sometimes we have to go around the roundabout and take a turn off it and then go back onto the roundabout again and take a different turn off on it. That's, you know, that's okay. That's okay. What's not okay is to take a turn off and know it's not right for you and to stay on it. And, and you know, that's, that, that's where we really have to remember. We only get one go at this. So go back to that roundabout and go around again and take a different turn off. Beautiful. There. Oh, I'd love to ask you a question since you're captive audience, right? So you talked about U-turns and now you're talking about roundabouts. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Intriguing <laughs> minds. Entrepreneurs have got the craziest, awesome minds. And what I love about it is, I mean, you spoke about your journey of going into a corporate environment. So you were an employee first, then an entrepreneur. And what I love about your journey is that you started two businesses that are highly successful. We've met your teams and they're incredible. They love you and adore you. And even with all of that as success, you still were looking for something and you created the nonprofit. And now when we look at the journey right now where a lot of people are talking about success versus significance, if you had to give advice to our young titans out there, how would, what, what would be your, your insights, some of the things that you had to overcome or implement in order to change the mindset from a, a for-profit mentality into a non-profit company that is now changing and impacting the lives of an entire country and more? So what would be some of your advice on that? Yeah, great, great question, Arthi. And the thing about it is, is that uh, I actually think I have the same mentality for the not-for-profit business as I did for the for-profit business. And the with the Entrepreneurs Academy and with QED, uh, and the Entrepreneurs Academy is really the one that I concentrated on, on more. It's a bigger business. Um, although we were for-profit, we were so much more for social impact. And you know we 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 are the entrepreneurs academy. We we help people start business and stay in business. So I mean we even did partnership with the government where we we only got paid if we were able to help people start in business out of long term unemployment. So we didn't get paid our full payment unless they were successful. So our I suppose our heart was always in the it wasn't about making money. It was about the impact that we were going to have, and it and it continues to be that way. And and the thing about it is, is that um, we probably could have made a lot more money if we didn't think like that. But that wasn't the point, you know. That 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 we still we made enough. We made our salaries. We made profit. 
we made enough you know and we still make enough um so i think the mentality is very much the same and certainly in my 30s when i sort of stood back and i was working long hours i mean i was working serious hours like three small kids um, you know, I, I was really working hard all the time and I really had to sit back and go, hang on, I'm working so hard. Where am I going to with this? Is this all worth it? And I and I took three days out and I and I went and I said to my husband, Jules, who you know well, and I, I said, Jules, you, you mind those little kids now and I'm going to go off and just sort of think about this and think, am I doing the right thing here? I'm working so hard and, you know, um, am, am I going, where am I going to with it? And the thing about it is with the Entrepreneurs Academy was, was that we were impacting so many people in helping them start business and stay in business that it was worth it. It really was. But things had to change because I was putting in too many hours uh, and I was really ending up with a really rubbish job rather than building a business. So that's when I started to really work on building the business rather than me just being the sort of bottleneck on it and uh, all the time. Uh, but for for uh, the the not for profit that I'm doing now, I very much have the exact same mentality. Except, I feel much freer in Lift Ireland. Um, I don't feel this. Uh, I don't feel any need to make any money. You know, so I I and I and and I sort of have a completely different view in that. Um, I mean, I've been looking down looking down the barrel of losing hundreds of thousands of euros equivalent to hundreds and thousands of dollars because of what we were doing in Lyft and what we were looking to do in Lyft and to get it to move and we were moving so quickly we were spending a lot of money and I, it wasn't on me because I, I was volunteering but um but I actually didn't mind because the the I suppose the heart and the purpose of what we were doing was so important that I just felt the money will come from somewhere. And that's really the difference between Lyft and running my nonprofit versus the um, the for-profit company. The for-profit company, I, I moved slower and more organically and made sure we were always making money. This one, the, the I suppose the, the vision and purpose is so strong that I sort of just go, we're going here anyway, the money will come from somewhere. Uh, so it's it's been slightly different. Thank you. Wow, wonderful. Ron, you have any questions? Joanne, maybe uh, this, a very similar question, but I'm going to use <clears throat> different terms. You have uh, done different things throughout the year, uh, throughout your time, and you have uh, told us that uh, several things that you did uh, were not satisfying to you. I want to use the term passion, um, niche, sweet spot, any of those kind of terms for um, for the young uh, uh, for the young titans who may be feeling the same thing that I'm not sure the job I'm doing is uh, really totally wholesome, fulfilling. How can you help us find? our niche, our passion, what a, whatever it is that is just totally fulfilling to us? I think that's a really, it's a really great question, but it's not an easy one to answer. Um, I, I, I think, I think, I, I think when I was 16, I felt this way. Um, I, I think when I was younger, I knew I wanted to do something and I knew I wanted to do something that was really going to make a difference. And I wanted to be part of that. And, and it was nothing to do with ego or anything like that. I just want, I just knew I had it in me, but I had, I had no idea what it was. And when I was 20, I had no idea what it was. I just always knew that there was something that I needed, to, you know, to do that there was some passion in me. And so the advice I think I'd probably have, Rod, is, is learn as much as you can along the way, because um, it's not like I could just give up my job in accountancy, you know, when I was 22 or whatever age I was. It's not like I could just give up the job and say, well, I'm just going to sit back here and wait for my passion and it's going to happen. For me and then 
and I need a variety of jobs as you possibly can. Just keep looking to see what it is for you. I mean, I, I set up, am I still here? Yeah. Uh, I yeah. set up a, uh, a great, I set up, yeah, I set, I set up a cleaning business when I was at college, you know, Oh, and I learned on the side uh, do, doing things and I, and I set up that and I hired two of my friends and got them cleaning houses with me and we had great fun and earned some money while we were at it. Um, and it was brilliant, actually, because we could uh, we could you we could uh, dictate our own hours. That was what I was looking for. Uh, I didn't want to have to work in a bar or anywhere. Or else what I have to say is, is that. We, we all want to find our purpose. We all want to find that thing. But we can't, we can't sit back and wait for it. We have to just keep going down paths and learn as much as we possibly can because every path we go down, we will learn an awful lot. So keep going down paths and eventually just listen to your gut. You will, you will know what feels right and just keep going down those paths that where you're, where it feels right on your inside. And then, and just keep going down those until you find a bit where it doesn't feel right. And then you just switch direction a little bit. Does that make sense, Ron? Joanne, it does. Let me ask you a follow on that uh, it sounds as if you're saying there were several times in your life that what you were doing just didn't feel right. However, if someone had asked you, well, what are you looking for? You might say, might have said, you know, I'm not sure, but when I find it, I will know. Now, Joanne, I want to ask you, did at any point, if what I just described, if that somewhat accurately described you, did you feel at some point a failure in, hey, I can't find what I'm looking for. I don't know what I'm looking for, so I'm just going to give up. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Great question, Ron. Um, it, it, and great observations. Absolutely. I did. I really did. Yeah. Um, I, I fe felt it. I mean, if you think about it, so I left college having done business, um, went into business, went into one of the top firms um, and then decided to leave and then went back to work for the university and then left there and went into the charity world and didn't feel that was for me either. And yeah, of course I did. Of course I did. Um, but I think I, and I and I think the bit of advice may be there for that would have been good for me and I probably got from my 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 mother at the time was it'll come you know just take your time it'll come it'll... you're you're breaking out it'll come okay there you go oh okay uh, now I have one friend in particular and I remember she did business with me and I remember sitting with her when we were in our late twenties and she was saying, do you know what? I never should have gone into business. I should have gone into nutrition. And I remember us thinking, wow. And I was saying, do it now, you know, I'll go back and do it. And then she was saying, well, it is now when you're 50, I, she never did go back and do it. And, and, you know, that's a pity. Because, um, you know, it's, it, we always think we're older than we are, if you know what I mean. Uh, and that, the, but there's, there's, there is loads of time ahead. So if you feel you've made the wrong move, just, just switch and, and go and do something else. Joanne, one final uh, follow-up. For the young entrepreneurs who might be going through a lot of what you just described, would you say, don't you ever give up? You find someone with whom you can identify, call it a mentor, call it whatever you want, but don't you ever, ever give up. Is, is that something you would tell me and any young entrepreneur? Absolutely, absolutely. If you believe it's for you, you know, look, we all know, we all know on our insides what's for us. We, you know, we all know, and there'd be people in our, you know, perhaps in our families or friend groups saying, you must be mad. Why would you be doing that? But they're not doing it. You're doing it. So um, it is absolutely, absolutely that grit, that determination, that drive. Um, they are so, so, so important because no matter what we do in life, we are going to hit hurdles. 
We're always going to hit mountains. We're always going to, but you can't get that really amazing feeling of freewheeling. You know, when you're a child and you're on a bicycle and you get to freewheel down a mountain, you know, that gorgeous feeling of doing that. You can only do that if you have cycled up the other side first. So, you know, it's really, um, you have to, yeah, to cycle up that other side, it takes determination and grit and chatting to yourself in your head and saying, come on, you know, I can do this for sure, for sure. Joanne, I'll close out by saying your smile and exuberance <laughs> is inspiring. Don't you ever lose that. Ah, uh, thank you, Ron. Thank you. Well, Joanne, you know, when you talk about observations, there's one observation I, I had outside of this. I mean, we're talking about 15, 20, 30 years of business here and there. And it was not just about the wealth of information you've got and the wealth of information here, but I thought, when we young when we got started? <laughs> <laughs> you know, not even teenagers yet. Uh, but yeah, but, you know, and I, I know, you know, you're, you're a great example of, 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 of amazing leadership and, and a great example, not only to women, of course, uh, but there should be an example to women, but to men as well. And, and not only in your community, not only in your country, even, but, but on a global scale. And, and I know, also know that you believe that there's a leader in each and every one of us. And through Lyft, I also know, because we, <clears throat> Artie and myself have been fortunate to be there at the, at the start of the training uh, in Lyft, and you, invite, you opened your heart and your doors uh, a long time ago, but your doors as well, and said, we were lucky to share your, your home with your family. But uh, we know a fair bit about Lyft, but we also know that Lyft is also something where you believe you can develop leaders and bring it out to them and, and, and help them to, to, to go further than they ever thought they should. But can you talk a little bit more internet as well as in, you mentioned Lyft a few times and there's most people here don't really know yet what Lyft is all about. Can you, can you describe something about, about that amazing process that you've been the driver behind ever since day one? Sure, sure. Uh, and I, uh, before I, before I say, talk about Lyft, it is really important to talk about this, that every single person is a leader because uh, every single young person watching this today needs to know that every single one of you is a leader. Every single one of you, as well as Raj and Ron and Dr. Halida and Arthi and Jan and Sheikh and myself, we're all leaders too, but every single person watching this is a leader. Now, some of you are going to be thinking, well, I'm not really a leader. What's she talking about? But let me explain what I mean. If you've got people around you that are paying attention to what you're saying, if you've got family, if you've got friends, if you've got college buddies, if you've got whoever around you, if they're paying attention to what you're saying, then you're leading them. And sometimes you're leading them a lot and sometimes you're leading them a little. And sometimes it is that they're leading you and sometimes you're leading them. But every single one of you is a leader. Now, the thing about it is, is that we can all get better at leadership. We can go get better at how we are leading and how we are influencing in a positive way those people around us. And what Lyft is about is, Lyft is about helping us to build our inner leader. So Lyft is a nationwide initiative in Ireland. So we have taken on a nationwide initiative to raise the level of leadership in the whole country. So we, over a 10 year period, have set ourselves a goal to get 10% of the population of this country lifting their leadership. And so Lyft is, we are showing people how to build their leadership. Now you might say, okay, I'm a leader. Okay, I get it and I hear you. But what exactly is leadership? Leadership is about who you are on the inside. It's not about your title. It's not about your position. It's not whether you're the team captain or the class captain or the, the leader in work. It's not about any of that. It's about your character. People follow character. They follow your integrity. They follow your, whether you listen, they follow your empathy skills, you know, the amount of empathy that you have. They follow your positive attitude, which is really important at the moment. They follow your, the respect. I mean, if you think about it, if I don't have any respect for the people around me, who wants to follow me? Nobody. So I'm not leading well at 
all. Now, as the way I look at it is, is that in our country, and, and I think this goes for all countries, but let me talk about my own country. In our country, if every single person in our country not only knew that they had value, but also felt that they had value because they were respected by everybody else, then we would have a much better country. And that's why we are looking at lifting the level of leadership in our whole country, because we know that we can do better. We're good, but we're not good enough. There you go, Jan. Hi, I have two questions for you. Two questions. I mean, you said the leadership so well. Um, my first question is that I know that you went to business, you went to charity work, you went to refugee camps and Rwanda border and all those things. But when you felt in your heart that this is the right place, what made you feel that, yes, this is the right seat that I should be sitting or this is the right place that I should be sitting? That's number one. Mm -hmm. From your inner feeling, what made you the right place? And the second is that what did you accomplish once you sat in the right place? How do you see your accomplishment and what made you happy? Two questions. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Halida. Um, I think, I suppose, um, so it was in 2016. Um, I, 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 I think I, I started to feel, I, I just started to feel that I needed to be on a new journey. Um, I didn't know what that journey was going to be, but I just had this feeling about it. Okay. Um, and then in 2017, early 2017, in, in the spring of that year, um, I started to get all kinds of ideas around what we were going to do. Okay. And I started to get really clear about what we were going to do. And you can call that the universe or you can call that your gut or whatever it works for you or whatever works for everybody else. I have my own thing. And um, so it, it very much, uh, I, I knew, I started to get all these ideas and I could see it very, very clearly about what it was that we needed to do and what, no, what we, what I needed to do. And that was in early 2017. And so I just started, I think probably I started to run. Uh, physically, I started to run and, and mentally I started to run. Okay. And, um, and, and we launched Lyft just over a year later. Um, so, um, I think I just got this real clarity of thought um, for me, which is probably quite a personal thing. Uh, and um, but it, but I knew it was right. It was very strong and very right for me. Um, and and I suppose it, for me, I suppose it felt a bit like my calling or what what it was. I'm not sure that works for you, but it worked for me. Um, it may not work for a whole load of people, or, you know, around me, but it it certainly worked at the works for me. Um, so that's the that's the first thing I I knew and I know that I am doing the right thing. Okay. Um, the second question then was um, about what have we accomplished? And no. this is I think this is probably why I'm so grateful that I've had so much business background, because now I'm running a not for profit, but I'm running it like a business. And so I know exactly what has been accomplished. And so it's not only that I know about growth in numbers, we ha now have over 10,000 people that have been engaged with Lyft and are working on building their leadership. We have 78 organizations from our national electricity provider, our national TV company, our, um, our banks, our three ba major banks, wow. they are all doing this. Our, our airport, everything, all doing it. We, um, so, so, I know all those figures and all that side of it, but we're looking for behavior change here. So we're measuring numbers, but we're actually really looking for impact. And we're looking at the impact on an individual. We're looking at the impact on organizations and we're now looking at societal impact. And one of the universities has started to research our societal impact, um, which is really amazing. So that's the bit I'm interested in because I know we're doing the right thing, but I, we need to get behavior change happening. It's not good enough that we do a really nice sort of leadership thing and we all feel lovely about it. Uh, we actually need to get behavior change happening, even if it's just tiny behavior change, and that's what we're looking for. So for sure, that's uh, we're 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 very um, 
uh, what's the word? We, we've got lots of detail and data on that. That's really important to me because I've given up my businesses or at least I've stepped out of my businesses to do this, um, which I really want to do. Um, but I'm wasting my time if I'm not if I'm not measuring it properly. So we're doing a really good job of that. I'm really happy with it. Thank you very much. Thank you. That that was great. That was that was really great. So so you you felt in your mind that yes, this behavior change is the right thing to do. You know that that is that is the impact that you would like to create among people, among institutions, and among many 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 platforms. Right? Yeah. So, yeah, and I and I think Dr. Halida, for for me here, um, I mean, as I've said before, like I love this country and we have a great country, but all you have to do is look across every single sector, and sure. you can see where there is problems or mismanagement or poor leadership or, and you sort of go, how does that happen? Why did nobody speak up about that? Why? What? What's going on there? And so what I what I can't continually say here is is that we're good here but we're good with a small g and we could be good with a big g so when are we going to when are we going to pull up our socks a little bit and say come on we know we could be better and so i am um, in fact almost on this day the 20th of october 2017 uh, in our biggest hotel in dublin i i spoke at a lunch with ceos in ireland and I said, I'm putting my hand up and I'm saying, I could be better and I could do better. Sure. And would anybody like to join me? And that's how this really started to move forward. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. You're Lovely. Welcome. Yeah. You're welcome. Great. Any other questions? Yeah, there is a, a question actually came in the Facebook comments for you, Kevin Johnson. He asked, uh, what truly motivates you? Oh, good question, Kevin. Um, what motivates me? Um, he himself is a, is a I, I know Kevin uh, personally, he himself is a leadership trainer, an awesome person. Um, uh, so I can understand, you know, his deep questions. I don't know if it's hard or uh, uh, no. easy for you. But it's a good, oh, it's great a good question. question. I, I, it's good. It's a great question. It's just there are a few things running around my mind. Um, sure. I think the thing that the thing that's coming to my mind on that, uh, Sheik, is uh, there, there, there are two things that really motivate me. One is growth. Um, it, it's really important to keep on growing. And when I when I left college, I didn't keep on growing. I, I didn't keep on learning. I was learning off myself um, and I didn't keep on reading. And I, I, di I just didn't keep that going. So I was getting older, but I wasn't getting any better. I was learning from experience and so on, but I, I just wasn't growing as much as I could. And it was only when I started to pick up books again that I, and I, I mean, and, and it's amazing. I mean, I was 10 years, more than 10 years, but I hadn't read a book, you know, um, and because I thought after college that that all stopped, whereas it doesn't stop. So growth really motivates me. If I thought I was going to stop growing, uh, I'd sort of go, oh, I'm not sure if it's really worth going on. If I'm going to start stop growing, I don't really want to get older and not get any wiser or better. So that's the first thing. That's one of the things that that motivates me. Um, sorry, two more things that motivate me. One is the idea of maximizing potential that really motivates me um and i'm talking about maximizing my own i ha I, I don't want to waste what i've been what i've been given you know i I'd, I'd i'd hate that idea that i was that i was good at something that i never found out i was good at because i just never tried it out uh so maximizing my own potential but also maximizing other people's potential so i love when I meet people and I'm thinking in my head, wow, I can see, I can see how amazing they are and they don't even see it themselves. So um, I love the idea of maximizing people's potential, which is, which is a core part of why I'm in the education business and core part of Lyft and why Lyft exists because we can be better. Uh, so that's an important part. But there is something else that motivates me and something else that really motivated me to start Lyft. Um, and that was 
it goes through my head every now and then, and I don't mean to be morbid about this, but if I pass away today or tomorrow, and let's hope it doesn't happen during this session, because it wouldn't be very pleasant for your for your people watching. But um, if I if I passed away, and you know, and I'm heading to meet my maker, whoever whoever that is, and I let's say I'm heading down the corridor, and and you know, and let's say I have a woman the same age as me from you know. Uh, Afghanistan on my left and you know and a, and a woman from inner city Mexico on my on my right and they're walking along with me and they're looking at me and they're going oh wow you got Ireland what did you do with that because you know one of them's thinking I was I was dodging bullets all the time and and the other you know you know what I mean whereas here we, you know, we are very fortunate and, and I'm aware of that and, and I've been gifted that. And so that motivates me not to waste it. Um, it uh, yeah, it does. it does, right or wrong, that motivates me. That motivates me to keep, keep moving and move fast because I've no idea how long I have. Wow, that, that is just a wonderful, wonderful, uh, wonderful, wonderful answer. I was, uh, not completely uh, envisioning it'll be uh, like this, but the answer really was touching. And in the interest of time, and you know, I um, will have only a few questions uh, coming and with among us or, or, or if any questions come up, but I do have a, a small question that I always wanted to, it's more of a comment and compliment, but at the same time, a question also, that what I saw, Joanne, whenever I was associating with you, I was coming to you for or over the phone or uh, Zoom or you know face to face anytime. The way you talk, there is a there is a, uh, a there is a character that you have that you captivate people uh, somehow or other. At the same time, what I have noticed for myself was that uh, I'm and I'm utterly fascinated by that is that. Um, you make people feel so good. Doesn't matter what level I'm in, what level everybody is, whenever they're around, but by the time I go to you and by the time I'm out of there, if I was making $2,000, by the time I get out, I'm, I'm making $20,000. No. So that kind of, how do you do that? What is the secret sauce of that? Is that leadership? Well, firstly, thank you, uh, <laughs> Thank you. Um... Thank you very much. Do you know what I love? I love what I do. I, I I love what I do, and I feel very privileged to do what I do. Um, this week, I I was training um, a whole load of bankers um, all about lift, and at one stage, I had them in small breakout rooms. So so I was on my own, sitting here at my computer, um, and I and I sent a video message to one of my team, and I said. Sometimes I have to pinch myself to to remind myself how like I can't believe I get to do what I do. You know, I really I really can't. I mean, we're we're talking to, you know, captains of industry and uh, and and really really wonderful people. And I'm not teaching them about profit and loss and balance sheet and cash flow statements as I maybe thought years ago I might have been. But I'm talking about if if we listen a little bit more, maybe we're listening to that teenager that needs to be listened to. Or maybe we're listening to that colleague that doesn't go home stressed at night, uh, you know, because they've been listening. We're talking about all these wonderful, wonderful leadership traits. I just think for, for any of us, and, and look, all you guys are the same. You're in uh, the same industry, business sector that I am of education, and especially around leadership. It is a, it is an absolute privilege to to work in this area and for me um i feel very very fortunate that i that i i feel very fortunate with the people i have around me um and with the with the journey that we're on um i, I feel very lucky chic i really do i'm very grateful so um maybe, maybe that's coming across a little in it i feel i re really do feel very lucky Oh, wonderful, wonderful. I, I, I mean, I don't want to take uh, much of time if uh, anybody else has any any question at all. And of course, you've got some thank yous and comments and all those in the, in the Facebook uh, comments as well. Well, I'll ask the question. Uh, you want to go ahead, Rarti? Go ahead, please. No, no, it's fine. I, no, no, please, uh, please, please, please go ahead. Hey, Shamor is not dead now, right? We're, we're 
being uh, chivalrous, you welcome to <laughs> okay. go, for it. go ahead. Please, Don't go please ahead. ask the most intriguing questions, Raj. I love your questions. No, no, no. Go ahead, please. Seriously, go ahead. I really want you to go, RC. Sure. <laughs> you yes. know, one of the things that I love about you, Joanne, is your humility. It, that is one of the most intriguing points that always stands out, and that is the generosity of your heart that comes out. That's your secret sauce that nobody can put a put a pinpoint on it. But what I've also realized about you is that you've got the ability to um, implement what other people teach. And one of the things that great leaders talk about is asking good questions. So one of the things we'd love to hear from you is what are some of your great questions or favorite questions you ask of your leaders to lift their potential or to help guide them, move them towards this powerful vision? Yeah, I, I thank you, Arthi. Um, uh, and thank you for those lovely comments about my secret sauce. And actually, I have a few more things on my secret sauce I'll, I, I'll, I'll share with you that are a bit more basic, but I'll tell you what they are. Um, the, the questions that I love to ask uh, the people that I work with is, look, all the time, it's why? Why are we doing that? Why? Why are we doing that? Um, the other question that I love to ask is, can we make that simpler? Let's make that simpler. Can we make that easier? Because... Um, in you know, especially like Lyft started off with with me, then two others. Now there are six full time people. There's going to be another person coming on next month, um, and and businesses can grow arms and legs and get very unwieldy. And um, so all before you know it, you can end up with a lot of processes and systems, and we don't even know why we've created them. So. Um, we we as a team we as a team meet uh, at 9 a.m. every morning. We have a daily huddle, uh, and every morning I will ask, "Why are we doing that? Um, and is there a simpler way? Can we do it simpler, or can we just get rid of it? Just get rid of it." The other thing I will frequently ask is, um, "Are we living our values there?" So the team, you know, might be doing something. How should I respond to that? And I just say, "Go deep into your insight." Go, you know, and just respond to it in your gut because they live the values. They're brilliant people. They are amazing people. So they can't go wrong. They can't go wrong in how they respond when they just go deep inside. There is no proper business response. There is a human response. And that's what I'm looking for. So they're the kind of questions I ask. And they're the questions I ask myself too, Arthi. I mean, you know me pretty well. And I will sit back and ask myself why you know, did I do that right? Could I have done it better? How could I, how could I be better? When I give a talk, I think, how could I have added more value? What could I have done better? So questions are fantastic. They're free too, which is brilliant. And uh, yeah, I, I look to, I look to add questions to my arsenal all the time. So when I hear a good one, I write it in the back of my notebook and I, and I, and I, uh, I use it. Um, so another another question I will sometimes ask my people is, what would you give yourself out of 10 for that? Um, and it could be a six month period, could be anything. And then I say, and what, what would have brought you up to one more figure higher than that? So it's a typical coaching question. You know, if I gave, you gave yourself a six out of 10, how could you have got a seven? So all those great questions, uh, but why is probably the biggest one. And can we make it easier is the other one. Um, but on my secret sauce, just on that one, uh, because I think that's a really interesting one of, you know, what, what, what makes you tick or what makes, and she referred to it earlier. I have no idea how you know how much sleep I get, <laughs> but I do get a lot of sleep. I get a lot of sleep uh, and it is definitely one of my secret sauces. I, I go to bed at 9.30 um, and, uh, and I get up early, I'm up at 5.30, so I get up early. But I, I do sleep a lot, and I, and I, I believe that sleep, drinking water, um, eating the right food, and exercise for me. If I get any of those, if I fall out of any of those, then I, I just go all wrong. And this week, this week just gone, I had a, I had a lot on this week of really 
amazing stuff. We did our awards this week, which was amazing because we had all these fabulous people being celebrated for leadership qualities. It was brilliant. Um, but, I, but there was a lot on and you have to be, and this is a good thing. If I was 20, I didn't realize this at all, that you have to be fit for, for business. You have to be fit for work. So sleep, water, exercise, and the right food. That keeps you fit, it keeps you mentally well. Um, I also take time every morning to journal and to just think and reflect and uh, read. And, and that keeps me, that's definitely the secret sauce. It's the simple stuff. Wow, that's that's wonderful. And, and when you say water in Ireland, it's water is water, right? <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> yes it's water it's not whiskey it's water is that what you mean yes it is it is yeah. water it is water we've a bit of a bad reputation there um but it is it is most definitely water that i'm talking about <laughs> Raj, you wanted to ask a question i think well i think in lieu of time uh, uh, the only thing i would definitely like to say because we are at the almost at the last minute here. But what I would say is what Joanne just said and said, what a wonderful question Arthi asked. Uh, based on that, I would say when Joanne, you were mentoring me and I had left my job, I was going into the business. I was working seven days a week, spending 10, 12 hours creating my whole course and everything. And at that time you said, how much time have you taken off? And I said, none. I said, I'm busier than I was at my job. And your answer was, you need to take some time off until you rest up one week is not going to make a difference. I, I thought you were going to say one day, but you said one week. And all I want to tell you is that, did it make a difference? Absolutely. Because when I came back, I was so much sharper. My idea started flowing. And I would tell you just that one tip that you gave me, one hint or one process that you put me on, just to take that time off, help me save a couple of months, literally. Otherwise I would have been going with that mental mindset. So whatever you just related as a business person, it's not just work, 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 but all the things that you said, simple things, but so profound. And most of the people miss that. Yes, Dr. Halina, yeah. you're on mute. Um, just one quick question. I'm, I think I'm asking on behalf of the Titans, the young people, that, you know, what makes a grand leader? You know, give me like four or three answers, you know, if I want to be a leader, what I need to do. Yeah, I, I think the two most important things, but there, there are more. But um, I think the two most important things are one, respect, I think, is for me, right up there sure. uh, understanding what respect is and really living out respect for everybody so that mm -hmm. even if, even if i don't even if i don't agree with someone or even if i feel i can't get you know they're not like me for whatever reason mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. um but to understand for me to know that that person has value and for me to treat that person and what they say with value, that's respect, that's real respect. And I didn't understand that for a long, long time. Um, and not that I was ever intentionally disrespectful to anyone, I wasn't, but I just didn't understand it. And I think, I think it's probably the case that a lot of people don't understand it. So respect is something that really makes a leader because great leaders understand that respect builds relationships. And Thank you. Thank you. And yeah, that's go a, ahead. Go ahead. That's yeah. a really big thing. The, the second one then, it, there's so many, um, Halida, and in fact, we did research in Ireland, Lift mm -hmm. Ireland, we did research a few years ago, and we asked the Irish people, if we're to become better leaders in Ireland, what do we need to get better at? Yes. And the Irish people said, we need more respect, more listening, more positive attitude, more empathy, sure. more, in more integrity, sure. more... Um, determination and grit mm -hmm. as we were talking about earlier yeah. um, more accountability and more competence so sure. all of these characteristics make up great leaders so we have people in positions and with positions and with titles it doesn't necessarily mean that they're great leaders it just mm -hmm. means they have the position and title great leaders are those people that we see around every day 
that have these wonderful characteristics and we can all build them and get better at them and get better at being great leaders. Thank you, thank you. I think in addition to respect, one is like feeling for others. You feel for others. So you see their needs and then you try to help them to meet their needs. And I think that, that makes a very good, uh, I don't know, you can name anything, compassion or whatever, but it's feeling yeah. for the others. That, that makes it more, more acceptable to other people. I mean, I mean, I have seen that in my life and I discovered various things in my life that I can do this, I can do this. And I see that people like it. And, and that, makes it, that makes a big connection. And I think that puts you in a, in a different place in their yeah. heart. That's so important. Thank you very much. Thank You're you. You're welcome. There's a lovely, um, there's a lovely quotation um, mm. that says um, that empathy is seeing echoes of another person in yourself. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Isn't that lovely? Yeah. Isn't isn't that like that, that's what you're talking yeah. right there? Um, yeah. And yeah, it is. It's lovely. Yeah. yeah. Lovely. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Well, we are at the, uh, actually we are over by a couple of minutes, so we can go uh, more, I guess. I have a uh, ton of uh, other questions, <laughs> excuse me. And I, I'm sure we all pick Joanne's brain and there's more things we learn every minute. That's how I see it. Uh, and I know each and every one of us here, we see the same thing and so many things we learned and, and she connected and, and she or it's it so or says it so nicely. You know, that's another thing that I see in how Joanne connects. But anyway, uh, next week we have a panel and three panelists are coming in, including Kevin Johnson, Chet Nabat, and Dr. Azam Hussain from uh, the University of Washington, D.C. But um, uh, and, uh, what I can say, just uh, uh, young Titans, please, uh, or anybody, please uh, share it with others so uh, rest of the people can get the uh, nuggets, the knowledge that Joanne just shared with her uh, tremendous astronomical success that in the last, you know, 20 uh, plus years. And I am thankful for this friendship, for this help, for this uh, guide and all the people who are here. And I do have full respect to all of them, uh, regardless of I can show it or not. But absolutely, this is just wonderful, wonderful. Uh, so with that, can we conclude, Raj? Absolutely. I think this is one of the most amazing sessions. Every one of the sessions was amazing, but Joanne, you nailed it. <laughs> I mean, seriously, you. coming from you, it means thank everything. You. And thank you for being here. Thank you for taking precious time out. Precious time out. Oh, uh, thank you. I'd put a little heart emoji up there like Arthi is, but I don't know how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> You have to learn to do that. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank well, you. Okay. Stay well. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Enjoy. Enjoy. Thank you very much.